2014 SEC Basketball Tournament, the Georgia Dome, where the Kentucky Wildcats, the number two seed, set to take on the third-seeded Georgia Bulldogs for a chance to advance to tomorrow's title game. We started it all on Wednesday night. And the brackets are down to one last semifinal. Florida came back from 10 down to beat Tennessee. If you missed it earlier, they're in the championship game at 315 tomorrow on ESPN. Who will they play, Kentucky or Georgia? We're about set to find out. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler along with Jimmy Dykes. Great first game. I don't think we could ask for more, Jimmy. And last night, the Kentucky fans here in full force in Atlanta asked their cats for more. After a slow start, they got it. Well, Kentucky, to me, looked very loose and very quick against LSU last night. Very confident ball club. Now, is that just a tease, or is that who they're going to be going forward? They can continue to make plays over the top of you, Brad, because of their dominating size and their wingspan. And this is a Kentucky team that, for the past three days coming into this tournament, John Callahan Perry said we had football like practices. They were a very physical team last night. Will that continue? We're going to find out. Georgia's been a good rebounding team, a great rebounding team. In fact, they're the surprise of the SEC, let's face it, as the number three seed. As we go to our Mazda one-on-one, -on -one, let's take a look at what we got this afternoon in game two. Well, Mark Fox has always had the ability to get the ball around the basket. That's going to continue today, but he also has to get Gaines going. This is the best three-point shooter in conference play this year, Kenny Gaines, and that's a big plus for their offense. And a hit first man Mentality. Kentucky, the best offensive rebounding percentage team in the country. I expect Georgia to lay the wood early on the opening possession. If you're the Kentucky Wildcats, move that basketball. That's when they're at their best last night. No longer driving the ball, forcing shots, drive the ball to kick out opportunities. And use this fan base, Brad. Very important. This is not the normal Rupp Arena crowd. These are not the season ticket holders. This is the bluegrass of the bluegrass nation. Make sure you bring them into play. There's your freshman starting lineup for John Calipari. The Harrison Twins, James Young, who had a big night last night. Julius Randle, a double-double, and Dakari Johnson, another seven-footer inside. For Mark Fox's Georgia Bulldogs, a mixture of youth and Dante Williams, the only senior. Three sophomores and man, Gaines and Morris, along with Marcus Thornton for the 19-12 and 12 Georgia Bulldogs. Third member of our team, courtside, Shannon Spake. Well, Brad, Coach Calipari spent the last week alerting the nation that when his team showed up here for the SEC tournament, they would see something different. He called it a tweak. And whether or not that tweak actually exists or what it is, we still don't know. In fact, Julius Randle would not give up the goods when I spoke with him this morning. But he did tell me that the way they played last night, they got back to playing basketball the way that these guys like to play. More physical, unleashed, with more freedom. And now, as you mentioned, Jimmy, the key is to keep it up for another 40 minutes. They lit up the crowd last night. I'm sure they'll do that early. Somebody said about 10 minutes ago, where's that Kentucky crowd from last night? They waited until the last eight minutes. The place is packed. Georgia in their black jerseys with red numbers. Kentucky in the white trimmed in blue. Our officials, Lee Cassell, Mike Nance, the veteran Tony Green's got the ball in hand. And you can feel the electricity already. One of these teams, two hours from now, knows they'll play the number one team in the country. Dante Williams and Julius Randle. And Georgia with a first touch. And the first round of whoops from the dog crowd. This is a Georgia ball club, Brad, that gets the ball around the baskets off a lot of flex cut action. They will try to grind this game for the next two hours. Keep it in a half court, and the team in black has a chance. Gaines is going to take the first shot and come up short. And Julius Randle, an easy first rebound. You don't want to give him too many uncontested looks, though. The best three-point percentage shooter in SEC play. Kentucky with Aaron and Andrew Harrison. The Twins on top. This is Andrew, number five. There's his brother, number two. Tried to spin into the lane, got it out to Young with nine on the shot clock. And a foul on Young. Mark Fox has a very good position defense philosophy. Closes the gaps down with early help, and he will force Kentucky to make jump shots in this ball game before it's all said and done. Almost turned it over as Mann kicks out. They work it. Same spot. Same result. Missed shot by Gaines for three. Randa. There's what he 
he's best at. Brad, I'm not sure there's been a tweet in the offense, but the only thing I've seen differently in talking to two coaches in this league, Julius Randle looked more face up, more isolation, letting him attack from 15 feet and down. Get it inside to Morris. First pass in low for the dogs, and they'll still have to bring it back out. In fact, they won't get it back out of there. They turn it over. Randall trying to go coast to coast. No foul. Ball out of bounds to Kentucky. Whoop, nope, Georgia. And Julius Randall can physically whip people 15 feet and down on the college level. John Calipari last night gave him a ton of touches on the right side so he could face up and get to the front of the rim with his left paw. But he's starting to move him around on the floor just a little bit more. Maybe opening up the offense for this young Kentucky team. Charles Mann, Alpharetta, Georgia. A lot of Georgia kids on this roster. He's going to pull up way short. Kind of did a fadeaway on that jump shot. Didn't have a lot of authority on it. Andrew Harrison trying to penetrate. And he's fouled in the lane. That's going to be on Charles Mann. Want to keep the Harrison twins apart today. Andrew's wearing blue shoes. His brother's wearing black. Young, long range. He's so good at that. His 71st three-pointer of the year. And James Young is wearing white. <laughs> Here they come. Nice spin inside and a good move by Charles Mann. I love this kid's game, Brad. A big physical point guard that can go get his own. And you're going to have to be able to do that against the size of Kentucky. Atari Johnson works inside and windows it. This should be a Kentucky team that thrives off of two low post studs, ball reversals, getting Randall, Johnson, Willie Colley Stein, and Engel. Right now it's Randall and Dakari Johnson both in there together. Johnson tried to get a piece of that shot, missed it. How about Randall's outlet pass, though, to Harrison? Lob to his brother, and he got it in and fouled. Wow, that was crazy good. I thought the pass was about one step late. Should have thrown it a little earlier, but then to go up and get it through contact, this Kentucky team is shot out of the blocks quicker. Very well-thrown pass through the contact, gets it up on the glass, a big basket for Aaron Harris. Brother of the brother bump. Way short on the free throw, though. Can't convert the three-point play. Still, Kentucky jumps out to a seven-point lead. Can, can, can Georgia score enough in this ballgame, Brad? At times, they can go through some scoring drafts. Yeah. Gaines and Mann are the two guys that can keep them in it. they got to get a lot of good looks and a lot of good touches early. Thornton and Jurisic in there right now for the dogs. Here's Thornton. He's going to take it. Thought about it too long, maybe. Came up short. Young, wide open, got it. Timeout, Georgia. Red, it started with... A 10-point deficit is not what Mark Fox had planned for the first four minutes. Kentucky looking like they did the final 30 minutes of last night's game. Georgia's only basket. Here's Thornton down low. Trying to post up one of the Harrisons and did a nice job of it. Yeah, a mismatch. Kentucky doesn't come and double down to give some help on the mismatch. Collie Stein in the lineup for Kentucky. And almost lost the handle. Aaron Harrison on the inside and just flushes it over a couple of Bulldogs. Aaron 
Kentucky picking right up where they were last night, Brad, playing loose, playing fast, playing aggressive, not looking over at John Calipari after a mistake. All the things he wanted from his team in this tournament, he's getting right now. James fouled by Carly Stein. As we go to break with 14.53 remaining. Early in the ball game, Aaron Harrison, the freshman, has had a lob from his brother, and that stuff to give Kentucky a 10-point lead. Point lead early for Kentucky, Jimmy. Brad, a good, good job of Kentucky in their half-court offense. You're going to see Andrew Harrison right here. He's going to go dribble the ball and give just enough of a rear screen to free up his brother. But now on the weak side of the floor, Jurisic should be here waiting in the gap help. That doesn't happen, and what's the result? Five dribbles, hands off, boom. Just enough of a, of a rear screen. Jurisic is late rotating over, and Harrison has, has a free alley to the rim. Very good opening offense by Kentucky to start this game. George's Kenny Gaines will inbound. After we have a little floor work on the far side, let's check in with Shannon quickly. Well, guys, that half-court defense is exactly what Mark Fox addressed in the huddle just now. He told his guys Kentucky's on pace to score 100 points. We have to get a stop. Play offense with authority, but you have got to play defense and get a stop. Got to keep the ball out of the paint. Make Kentucky beat you taking jump shots. Brandon Morris on the dribble has to kick it back outside. Jurisic, 10 on the shot clock. Good Kentucky defense so far on this Georgia possession. Man over Carly Stein. Got it. Yeah, really a good job by Man to have great patience coming off the ball screen. Brad didn't predetermine what he wanted to do. Read the defense. Willie Carly Stein backed off. Let it fly. Aaron Harrison feeling it, and he hits it. Two on the inside, one on the outside. Harrison and Harrison. Terrific combination right now in the Georgia Dome. Jurisic can be a guy that can help Georgia scoring. He has streaks where he goes... Half a game without scoring and then can hit 10 points in a row. Got a foul on the inside on Alec Poitras. Well, the rim looks good to both of the Harrison twins right now. You're going to see just again the dribble handoff action, punching the gap twice, and on the second punch, the reversal out and dialed in is two and one. Kentucky, what was the key? Kentucky moved the basketball. They're moving the basketball to start the game. That's what they did last night to get here. And they're 85 67 went over LSU. Didn't do it early, but once they got it rolling and got the crowd behind them, it was all cats. And good job getting Collie Stein up in the air. I just... Parker. Stein's coming out. Willie Collie Stein in the month of March has to know you can't lose your discipline out on the floors of seven footer. He has good games, bad games. He had a great game last night, I thought. I thought he played as well as he had all year. He had six blocks, six rebounds, and eight points. Well, Brad, if Kentucky's going to make a run in this tournament, in the next tournament, he can't be good game, bad game. Right, He's got to be good game, good game, good game. <laughs> First point for Parker, freshman out of Tulsa. That's what I was talking about last night. Eight points, six rebounds, six blocks. Now Kentucky's half-court defense right now is good enough to win this game. Double figures if not going away. You do not allow Georgia to hang in this ball game from the free throw strike. John Calipari is sending that exact same message to Willie Colley Stein right now. Parker only got one or two. He didn't play in the regular season game between these two teams. And Johnson is fouled. Two Bulldogs there, just a matter of who they're going to call it on. Leon, Dante Williams first. Scotty Wilbekin wasn't watching basketball. He's got done playing a bunch of basketball. And again, hit a huge three-pointer before the buzzer that cut a 10-point lead to seven. And there come from behind win in game one this afternoon. 14 points, had one assist in 37 minutes. Had two or three turnovers, but... 
Every coach in this league will tell you that Scotty Wilberkin can win a ball game with his toughness, and it showed through again today. Johnson missed both free throws, so it goes out of bounds. Georgia ball trailing by nine. Nice baseline move, but a foul before the shot. Kenny Gaines held by Young. That's two fouls on Young, kind of early. Brad Mark Fox, him out, I think. Excuse me, partner. Mark Fox has changed his offense in this game. Back and forth. He's gone to the flex action where he's flooded the baseline, trying to power the ball around the rim. Then he lifts his offense the next possession to open up the baseline drops. So he's given Kentucky not a steady diet of anything, trying to make them work defensively. The interesting to see how long Young stays on the bench in his first half is Matt Calipari and a word about that second foul. That'll keep him down for a while and take away a big three-point threat for Kentucky. Man's going to go over Randall. Comes down to Andrew Harrison. Poitras. <laughs> Flyby by his defender, but he short-armed it on the inside. Parker, he was the guy that fell down in the backcourt, so as a trailer, took a late three and missed it. That's a push-off. Julius Randleback got his arm up. More hoops coming up tomorrow on VA Showcase on ABC. Dwight Howard. Atlanta native and the Heat take on King James and the Heat. All starts with NBA Countdown presented by Speed Stick Gear at 3 o'clock tomorrow on ABC. I thought Julius Randle got away with a push off driving the ball at the rim. Now he can flat out bully people, but the defender has a right to his spot on the floor as well. Maybe some poetic justice then that he turns it over, gives it back to Georgia. And right now, J.J. Frazier, a freshman, playing the points for the Bulldogs. You're not afraid to let it fly, is it? I was going to say. <laughs> One of your favorite young guys in this league. Well, he's fast. Courageous. And he's courageous. Some of his shot selections, not the best in the world. Baseline move, drawing a foul. Nice move down to the baseline by Parker. I'm telling you, Mark Fox has lifted his offense now. He's not going to go body to body blows for 40 minutes. Olsen picks up the foul with the 11. 1983. The building is much more stable than it was six years ago here today. Welcome back. Brad Nestler, Jimmy Dyke, Shannon Spake. Beautiful day outside. We don't have to worry about all that Absolutely stuff. Absolutely it is. Semi-final Saturday in the SEC. Both teams really checking Brad on the glass to start this game. Neither team has an offensive rebound yet. At the free throw line, Juwan Parker, freshman from Tulsa. I mentioned he didn't play in the first game of the regular season, the only game of the regular season, had a hamstring issue. And by the way, also, Kenny Gaines didn't play in that game with a thigh bruise. So two key guys for Georgia back on January 25th when Kentucky routed the dogs 79-54, didn't play. We'll see if that makes a difference today or not. They're both out there and healthy. Brad, a non-conference play, Mark Fox, he loses Contavious Caldwell Pope last year early to the NBA. So it took him the first five or six games to, to get his offense going. And by the time he got that fixed, he had to work on his defense. <laughs> but once conference play began, they have been a very steady, consistent, tough out in this league. They won 12 games in conference play, which is the same as Kentucky. And, of course, the only better record was Florida's perfect 18-0. Marcus Thornton picks up the foul, and Julius Randle will go to the free throw line. Julius had 16 boards last night to go with his 17 points. That's right. a man's night. Yeah, he had a man's night. He's a grown man. And if John Calipari is going to open the offense up a little bit, get him in some isolation plays and let him attack with his big body, he cannot fade at the rim. This is a Kentucky team coming into this ball game that has taken 976 free throws. They get there a ton, and Randle can get their double figures every game if he doesn't fade around the rim. And the conference freshman of the year knocks down both free throws to stretch the lead back to nine. Georgia hasn't had much on the inside with the exception of that one move by Marcus Thornton. Jurisic now trying to post up Aaron Harrison. And a bump. 
And a foul. On Aaron Harrison. And Georgia's going to be in the one on one. Well, Kentucky still at, at times, you watch them defensively, their they're struggles to guard the basketball. I talked about it in the first game. I trust teams at this point of the year that their guards fight you every single possession on the defensive end. Has Kentucky made progress in that area? Yes. Do they still have progress to make? Absolutely. Randall got it in stride and got slapped on the hand. By Brandon Morris. So Georgia's got 16 fouls now. You know what Randall does well for a, for a young kid that size? He catches the ball really well on the move. Yeah. A lot of guys you can't trust throwing it to him on the move. Randall's got it, and then he's on the deck with it, making a play like an experienced guard. You know, and he's not afraid to bring it up on the dribble, and I think that's kind of one of the same things. So he absolutely. He is a locomotion coming at you in transition. First misfire. Watch him catch the ball and move right here. He's trailing the play and then right in stride, very confident as a 6'9", 235-pound Haas, making a play with a basketball. And Calipari trusting in those situations. Kentucky only two out of six from the strike. And we're going to have a foul on Kentucky. Trying to battle for the rebound. Orthrus picks up his second. Georgia now in the bonus before Kentucky is. So now how many points can they put on Kentucky from the free throw strike before Kentucky gets to that bonuses? Georgia hit 18 to 28 in the regular season matchup, but more importantly last night they hit 31 out of 42. They're not hitting them so good today. Both teams leaving some 15 feet away right now. Randall on the outside, moves it over. Poitras for three. And Dakari Johnson, easy rebound. Frazier was the only guy close, and he's giving away about a foot or more. And that's Johnson moving inside. And the littlest guy comes out with a rebound that time. Johnson's got to use that glass. I know it was a power move. At the end of the power move, he's still got to get that ball up on the square. Kentucky jumped on Georgia early for a 5-0 lead. They kept the lead right around 9 and 10 for most of the first half of this half. There's a nice move to the basket by Cameron Forte. He just came in for Georgia. Randall drawing a crowd of black jersey Bulldogs. They don't have to bring it out on top. Pass the midway point of the half now. 19-12, Wildcats. That's a 2-3 zone, a 1-1-3 zone. No reason for Georgia to get overextended on too many positions. Randall, good fake to get the Bulldog defense up in the air. And then on the drive, missed the shot. Aaron Harrison coming back in. A little indecision about who's going out. I think Randall's going to get a breather. Boy, defenders just bounce off of Julius Randle. An official told me that earlier this month in the airport one morning. And, well, those guys have their eyes on the game. It's amazing how much film officials study that we don't talk about enough. Andrew Harrison tipped it out to his brother Aaron. So Kentucky keeps possession. Now Jurisic got a hand on it, knocked it away from Johnson. Frazier, pull up three. There's your guy. <laughs> Fearless, <laughs> courageous. Willing to take big shots in transition. Georgia has to score points in transition, Brad. Even if it's a 50-50 shot because Kentucky... Frazier, the freshman out of Glenville, Georgia, has cut the Kentucky lead to four. 5'10 freshman. That's his 18th three-pointer of the year. Only shoots about 28% from out there, but it seems like when he hits one, it's a big one. Just got the dogs kind of back in the thick of this thing. Olsen's going to try three. But Gary Johnson had it, but lost it to the quick hands of the Bulldogs. Cameron Forte made the play. Thornton underneath. And 
Maryland going to have a foul on Georgia. Forte, I think, trying to battle for the rebound. Yeah, Dakari Johnson is going to come out, I think, and Marcus Lee is going to check in. John Calipari not liking Johnson the last two possessions. There's the substitution that I thought would happen. Johnson gave up a ball in the low block and then gave up a ball in offensive rebound, not being strong with it. And that's one thing Georgia can do. They're very physical. They play with hot hands around the ball, especially on the low block. And Johnson's going to have to learn that lesson within this game now. At the free throw line, Aaron Harrison leading Kentucky in scoring right now with seven. 79% free throw shooter. And that one rolled around and in. He had missed his first one. Even with that, Kentucky hasn't had a field goal in over five minutes. Coming in today, Kentucky ranking seventh in the country in made free throws, fourth in attempts. Aaron Harrison got them both. Nurisic was open momentarily. Three-pointer in route. Just sort of died on the back of the rim from Kenny Gaines. Yeah, John Calipari's best team throughout his coaching career back at UMass, Memphis, and the national championship team would smother you and impose your will defensively, jerk it off the defensive glass, and then run it up your backside in transition. That's what he's won his team to do more of in this game. We talked about those teams that he took to number one. He's one of only two coaches to take three teams to number one in the country. Frank McGuire, the other. Five on the shot clock, eight and a half. Andrew Harrison, Thornton got a piece of it. Johnson trying to stay with it, and another big rebound by the little guy, Frazier. Mark Fox continues to change his offensive look. He's running the flex action. There's the flex cut, bad pass, and we're going the other way. Trying to get his guards inverted inside. The now, somebody's heading to the championship against Florida tomorrow. Right now, Kentucky's got the lead. John by six, 21-15. John Calipari's team has led throughout. He was with Shannon during the timeout. Coach, it's been about six minutes since you guys have scored a field goal. What is missing from that part of your game right now? We pass, we'll stop passing. So we got much, we got two ball stoppers on the court now. To start the game, that ball moved. The ball stopper gets it, set up, dribble, won't pass it quick, won't throw it to a guard, and they get where he's supposed to go. And that's why the flow is not there. So we got to just get back to it, but we're fine. Something you've been stressing all season, but 15 overall fouls for both of these teams. What do you think about that? Well, all they're doing is driving the ball and trying to drive baseline, and we're giving them baseline drives. So it's what a young team does at times. Thanks, Coach. Couldn't have shot it off better for Kentucky. Seven out of eight from the field and led by 10 and 0 for 9, as Shannon said, since. Big rebounding advantage. And their lead is six. Brad may be talking about Julius Randle being a ball stopper. As powerful and as strong as he is, the last three or four times he's touched it, he has lowered his head and driven the ball in. Not a guy that's going to beat anyone with passing, but John Calipari is right. That ball has to stay hot. The other reason for Kentucky right now, they're getting 60% of their misses in this ball game. The problem is zero second chance points by Kentucky. Harrison, big advantage there in size over Frazier, and he uses it beautifully. Andrew Harrison, that is. I think Calipari tells his guys, if you have a, if you have a mismatch, and Frazier will be a mismatch the entire ball game, take him one-on-one. -on -one. Dominic Hawkins in the lineup for Kentucky. He's guarding Frazier right now. Kenny Gaines has been held scoreless. Yurisic with a hook shot, got it. He's a scorer, Brad. He can step out and stretch you as a four-man. He's big enough and tough enough to pound away with Randall on the block. You're looking for another scorer to go with, with Gaines and man. Jurisic is a guy that could step up. And he can pop out and hit a three for you, too. Hey, the ball's not moving at all. Marcus Lee going to set a screen. The Harrisons play catch out on top. And... Hand check foul on Kenny Gaines will be his second. Let's see if Mark Fox has to go to his bench, which is not much of a bench to start with. And he's thinking about it. Here comes Yuan Parker. He's going to get Gaines out of there, I would think. 
Aaron Harrison, two out of three from the line. Rips the first one. He's had a big first half. The Brad, a Georgia team that's struggling to score offensively. The leading score, for the most part, goes to the bench, and a non-scorer comes in. So now critical for Georgia. Their ball care is at a premium to keep Kentucky out of their transition game. Can they get a good shot? And if it doesn't go in, still get their defense set. You know that's on Mark Fox's mind right now. 11 for Aaron Harrison. And the lead back to 8 for Kentucky. Good look to Williams underneath. Can't get it to drop. Would have been a three-point play opportunity. It was Marcus Lee inside with the foul. Georgia tried a quick pass down to the baseline. As good as anybody in this league is Mark Fox getting the ball at the rim. They're going to send the guard inside right here to just kind of crowd up and free up a, a, a big sticking his head underneath the net. Mark Fox will invert his offense, Brad, and send the guard inside, put him in traffic, let him be a screener, and again, get the ball around the rim. Dante Williams, the only senior in Georgia's starting five. Uh, Ellenwood, Georgia, had a big night on seniors night in Athens at Stegman Coliseum. His send off there as the only senior on the Georgia team that plays a lot. And the second free throw comes out. They mentioned only the only senior. As a result, Charles Mann is a sophomore in the lead guard. Still learning his own position, but having to lead as an underclassman. And that, that's another reason why they struggled in non-conference play. Yeah, and he's not out there right now because he's got two fouls as well. This kid's just feeling it right now. Aaron Harrison said, let me have the ball. As a shooter, sometimes the rim looks good to you in a, a new arena, and sometimes it doesn't. It looks good to Aaron Harrison right now. Frazier, quick pull-up jumper. Yes. John Calipari told Shannon, concerned about the outside drive that Kentucky continues to give up. That time is an outside drive into a tough jump shot from two. Ooh, a lot of physical play underneath. Dakari Johnson using that 275-pound body and banging it against Dante Williams. Still didn't get it to go. And a foul on the other end is going to be on Kentucky. Uh, Dominique Hawkins. 30 for 30, a requiem for the Big East, exploring the meteoric rise of the Big East Conference, becoming one of the most successful college sports leagues in America, and then eventually fighting for survival in a new era. 30 for 30, it's coming up tomorrow night at 9 on ESPN. At the free throw line is Brandon Morris out of Lathonia. Just about every time I mention a hometown, it's a Georgia city. It's a Georgia-loaded team that Mark Fox has. And yet, a lot of guys get away from this state that end up being stars other places. We saw some for Tennessee, two or three in the first game. A lot of basketball talent in the state of Georgia. And Mark Fox was tired of hearing about Cat Lamb. <laughs> and he went right to the... sending a message to his own home crowd and... They didn't receive it very well. There's not much of them in here. There's a lot of blue in here, that's for sure. Six-point game, though. His team is hanging with the Wildcats. Randall doesn't get it. J.J. Frazier's got his third rebound. At the five-minute mark. That's the shot that Georgia wants Kentucky to take. Julius Randall in the short corner in the early clock. Baseline move into heavy traffic, and a walker. It could have been a three-point play. It was a nice move by Brandon Morris, but he took too many steps. Jimmy was talking about what Mark Fox said this week. I'm sick of hearing about Catlanta. It is the Georgia Dome. I could care less. they got a great fan base. They really do, but I want our fans to root for us. That's all we'd need, courtesy of the AJC. And Mark's coat is off, and his lid almost came off last night as he got a technical in the game that eventually led... Georgia to a two-point win over Ole Miss. And this is some of the action from last night against the Rebels. And Mark didn't even like Jonas Hayes, one of his assistants. Get out of my face. And <laughs> it was a little heated last night for Coach Fox. Well, he, Mark Fox has coached this year under pressure the first couple of months. The fan base was trying to put some pressure on him, but he would have no part of it. He continued to keep his nose down and keep grinding away with his guys. Discounted the noise around the program, solidified his job status, and he knows he has to win this SEC tournament, get an invite. And he's going to throw 
blow for blow as a coach do whatever he can to keep life in his guys. I think you take Billy Donovan out of the mix. He's a coach, coach of the year in the Absolutely. SEC. Absolutely. As Dakari Johnson's got a little bit of blood or cut on his forehead. They're working on that right now. That's why we had the stoppage in play. As we get back to it, live action, 439 to go in the half. Kentucky, big blue, by six. Harrison thought about another three. He's been red hot from the outside. And the inside, for that matter. Easy to guard right now. Kentucky has guarded himself this possession because the ball hasn't moved. Harrison, same spot. This time it won't go. High for the rebound is Dante Williams. Right, that's not good offense. Reverting back to what they look like much of January and February. There are a lot of no-purpose cuts in college ball when I watch teams play. Mark Fox's offense has a purpose for every cut. Poitras picks up his third foul. It's going to send Yersic to the free throw line when we return and when we hear from Shannon with Mark Fox in a minute. All right, guys, we'll see you in about four minutes. Kentucky by six. What does the Fox say? Shannon, we'll find out. Coach, you guys, you told your guys in that first time out that they had to get some stops, and they've done that. What's been the key in it? Well, I mean, we went to a lot of zone. Uh, we've gotten back in transition and, and made them play five on five, and, and that's been a key for us because we've gotten some stops, which has allowed us to, to have a little bit more freedom the other way. Charles Mann on the bench in foul trouble. How have you had to adjust because of that? Well, we did it last night. So we're, 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 uh, we had, a, we had a, dry, a dress rehearsal last night. So we've been there. Uh, JJ's playing well. we got to stay with, you know, we got to stay close here until we get to the half, then we'll get him back. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Yeah. Charles Mann had five points but had a couple of quick fouls, and so he's relaxing. You are so side. dialed in with the younger generation, by the way. <laughs> what does the Fox say? If it wasn't for your daughter, I wouldn't be. J.J. Frazier's already played eight minutes in this game, Brad. He averages nine. And man is going to sit the rest of this half. And can Georgia just stay in contention? A lot of pressure on this guy. He has a young, thin body. And Kentucky's been trying to bounce him around, but he's held up well. I guess the one, do, one thing I really like about J.J. Frazier, he doesn't know what he doesn't know. And that, that's very important. Johnson, what a big body. And yeah. one. Big body with a big move and big shoulders. John Calipari is trying to play smash mouth basketball around the rim against Georgia. Putting one big on one side of the floor. Johnson and Randall on the other in case there's a cleanup on the weak side. The catch. Own your space, get it up on the rim. That's about all you can ask a big guy to do as a freshman. Own your space, catch the ball, get it up on the glass. Well done by Dakari Johnson. Dante Williams maybe gives away, I don't know, 60 pounds uh -huh. in that matchup. Parker, double team, will have to get back up to Frazier. As we're under three and a half minutes. Driving inside. Tips. Loose ball. Polson comes out of it. And then a cheap foul that Georgia didn't need from Brandon Morris. who picks up his second. A good key moment by Jared Polson in this ball game. Just comes in and kind of keeps things going. Defending his spot well. Coming up with loose ball. Now gets himself to the free throw strike. And the senior out of Wilmore, Kentucky, steps to the stripe. We were there on senior night as Paulson and John Hood both started the ball game and both hit big shots in about the first minute that lit up Rupp Arena. Rarely do you say senior in Kentucky these days, do you? <laughs> With John Calipari. They didn't have to buy a lot of flowers or frame a lot of jerseys and normally don't. Missed the second. <laughs> John Calipari will have no part of excuses with his ball club. He's starting five true freshmen. They're destined to be about a five or six seed, most likely in the NCAAs. That is one heck of a year. But the bar for Kentucky is higher than a five or six seed, and we all know it. It'll be a foul before the shot, and it will be on Dakari Johnson. Brad, when I was an assistant coach at Kentucky, go to the SEC tournament every year. I remember Coach Sutton in the locker room talking about how the, the passionate fan base that follows us when we travel, 
I talk about the top of the broadcast. These are not your season ticket holders. These are people that they save money all year long. There's a lot of folks here that follow the Big Blue Nation. This is their vacation. They're taking days off of work to come down here and spend their money. And you use that if you're a coach at Kentucky or any program like that <laughs> to drive your guys. And I think Kentucky's feeding off the crowd right now. There's no doubt about it. They did last night, especially. And they went over LSU. The place was electric. George is hanging around just enough to keep them somewhat subdued right now. I remember reading a letter about a week after we got knocked out of the conference tournament, Kentucky, from an 87-year-old lady who said, I use my vacation every year to come to the tournament. I want my money back because of how you play. <laughs> okay. There you go. And a guy that's seen about every Kentucky game for maybe 50 years, Bob Wiggins, is not here tonight. We wish him the best. I know he's watching. For a while, he'd seen every Kentucky game, I think, for 43 years in a row, something like that. Well, tomorrow you've been waiting for Selection Sunday. Sports Center starts it off at 5.30. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the brackets as they're announced at 7. Our experts are breaking down with two hours of bracketology. Who's in, whose bubble's gone, and who's poised to make a run to the Final Four. It's Selection Sunday on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN tomorrow. Updated top seeds, according to Joe Lenardi. And he's got Michigan in now after... John said an unbelievable finish in the Big Ten. And that would move Villanova to a two seed if indeed that's the way it's going to go. I think you can make a strong case for that Big Ten champion to slide up in front of Villanova. Florida won the game here earlier today. I think they've locked up the overall number one seed. I completely trust Wichita State and Arizona. Juan Parker. All his scoring from the free throw line. Georgia will use every one of those that they can get. And that gets them back to four. Wow, look at that. They have 11 to Kentucky, seven. I said earlier, don't allow Georgia to stay in this game on the free throw strike. And that's what Kentucky is doing. Remember, they went 31 out of 42 last night to beat Ole Miss. They like to rebound. They like to get to the free throw line. They don't have great shooters, but they hang with you by the way they're playing right now. Eight on the shot clock. Colson's going to take a three. Got it. Yeah, I said money by Colson. Brad, money minutes. John Calipari's getting out of Colson. Frazier went on early help. Got himself stuck in a position and left Colson wide open in the corner. Georgia's almost got to have an answer, even if it's just a two here. Jurisic is going to try. No, he isn't. Thought he was going to take a three. He has that range out there. Yeah, can Georgia close out the remaining 140 in this half? Very important. It's got to be a push from behind by Marcus Lee. His second foul. Matt Frazier lost his defense of discipline. And watching right here, he's going to overhelp. Boom, steps in and overhelps. That was a non-rim threat drive. Harrison was not going towards the rim. And he leaves Polson open. And that's what I'm talking about. The passion that they bring. Jurisic with four points. And Mark Fox told me this morning, Kentucky, we're playing a team that they're good is really good. And that's what he's up against. Kentucky playing their best basketball maybe of the season last night. And continuing right now. That's an air ball. Juricic keeps it from going out of bounds. Juricic sets and fires. Tipped up and in by Cameron Forte, who's done a nice job off the dog bench. Back to four again at the one-minute mark. Timeout, John Calipari. And he's going to ask Andrew Harrison several questions. As Kentucky goes to the bench. I talked about Georgia's ability to score the basketball in transition or early clock. And that's what it was with Juricic. A little bit of a run on the trail play here. And as a result, Forte, look at his eyes right in front of the rim. Great concentration through the traffic by Forte. And he goes up with a left paw. I think that's what Georgia has dialed in on right now. If we have an opportunity in transition or early clock, let's get that ball up because Kentucky's size in the half court, the true half court game, is bothering us. 
Mark Fox had a problem with man on the bench with foul trouble the first half. He's one minute and two seconds away from handling that problem. Yes, and Forte, nice job on that one. Of, that ball was sort of stuck on the front of the rim, and he gave it enough oomph yeah. to get it up and just let it drop. Bulldog fans excited by their team's performance here in the final 62 seconds, trailing the number two seed by four. Now, if you're Georgia, this is a point where you don't want two bad things to happen and end up eight or nine down at intermission. You yes. want to stay at four or maybe improve it. Well, they're in a danger zone at a minute 40, and now they're in a really good zone with 58 seconds to go. Can they get a stop? Randall got Thornton on his hip. Has to give it up. Good defense by Marcus Thornton to keep his feet planted. Eight on the shot clock. Aaron Harrison's been the hot hand all day for Kentucky, and it continues. How tough was that by Aaron Harrison because there was nothing to be had on that possession. He just had to go make a play. You can guard Kentucky's plays. Sometimes you can't guard their players. Georgia will play for the last shot. Try to cut it to four or less, depending on if they get a score. And turn this dude over to Georgia. You're in good shape right now. You're just down two possessions. I feel a J.J. Frazier shot upcoming. Now they tried to get it in and did to Forte. Extra pass. A good one to Thornton on the baseline. Nice play by Georgia to come up with two before the break. That sums up a Mark Fox coach ball club. The ability to get the ball near the rim and then to get the ball up. Play their own version of smash mouth basketball, blow for blow with Kentucky in the first half. No panic by Forte with the shot clock winding down, the game clock winding down. A good late emergency feed, and Thornton does a good job, Brad, of filling the opposite block and getting an angle on Kentucky, and we have a ball game with 20 to go. Do we ever. Kentucky leads by four at intermission, 36 to 32. Georgia hanging with the Wildcats. Right. The Buffalo Wild Wings halftime reports coming up from the studio with John Saunders and Bruce Pearl after this message and a word from our final underway. Just about set to start the second half. Kentucky, the two seed leading the third seed of Georgia Bulldogs by four, 36-32. Brad Nussler and Jimmy Dykes back with you. Had it not been partner for Aaron Harrison in that first half, I don't think Kentucky would be in front at all. Yeah, he's the, the, the rim looks really good to Aaron Harrison in this ball game, and his brother looks really good to him as a passer right now because <laughs> you look at the highlights from this first half, Aaron Harrison, a very smooth offensive flow right now, and his brother Andrew's doing a good job of finding him in rhythm. In transition, there you saw the play that was a terrific job of concentration from Andrew to Aaron, and then a little bit of a butt screen right here for Aaron Harrison to work off of his brother. The, galley, the alley opens up. Jurisic doesn't rotate over. And Aaron Harrison punches it at the rim. Again, Andrew Harrison takes the ball away from his brother. The little throwback. He dials it up and knocks it down. What has Aaron Harrison done in this game? He's made three twos, two threes, and he's four for five from the free throw strike. Separated by one minute at birth. Only separated by about 10 feet on the court the whole first half. Yeah. He's got 16. The rest of the team has 20. Four-point lead. Here we go. Second half to find out. Who plays Florida for all the marbles tomorrow afternoon on ESPN? Georgia off the miss. They'll have an opportunity to cut further into that lead. The ball care by Georgia in the first half was terrific. Only three turnovers. And remember, man with a basketball, the most trusted hand, only played eight minutes. So they've kept Kentucky out of transition by not turning it over. This guy hadn't scored in the first half. Still hasn't. Rimmed out for Kenny Gaines. A 13-point a game score. Randall with a handle and with authority on the throwdown. One of the few times that Mark Fox hasn't got his half-court defense set. You let Kentucky get loose three or four times in this half. That might be enough. Last night against LSU, and we had three points and six rebounds at halftime and then exploded for 13 and 10 in the second half. Will that be the beginning for Randall? Well, there's been a flush and a rebound. So he's up to six points and nine boards right now. He cuts him through it away. Yeah, he's coming out again. He, he's not strong enough, tough enough in traffic right now to play in this game. And look out, Charles Mann, and look out, cheerleaders and band and everybody else. Dakari Johnson has to realize everything's gone to another level. We're in postseason play. He's been way too careless and soft with the ball. 
who has not been too careless and soft is Julius Randle in transition, Brad. When he gets at that angle, it is over. He punishes you. He punishes you from 15 feet and in with his physical talent. Charles Mann at the free throw line. Five points in the first half. Jimmy said he didn't play much of that first half. Second team all SEC performer. Uh, is voted by the coaches. And here comes Johnson out and Collie Stein in. He's going to sit in the coach's chair. And he's going to hear from the coach in the coach's chair. You get the ball in a low block. The double team comes. Don't play with the basketball. Get it out of there. And got them both. First two points of the second half for Georgia. Mark Fox played a lot of zone in the first half. He opens up man-to-man -man again. But how long can he go in this defense with, with man in foul trouble? Remember, Young had a couple of fouls in the first half, too, taking away this guy and that kind of play. I like what they do with James Young. They get him running back to his right shoulder because he's left-handed, so automatically in stride, he's a step closer to the basket with his finishing hand. Man, pulls up and around everybody. Nice move. Wasn't that a good stop? We don't talk about that enough in basketball. How well can you stop on balance? And man did it well. Carly Stein on a follow missed. Georgia's going to get a rebound. Man, you, now Dakari Johnson's coming back in. It's rotation right now with Calipari and his five guys. It's an open door policy. Revolving door policy. Charles Mann scored the last basket. Not on top right now. Georgia hasn't been as close as two points since the beginning of the game. They still aren't. Collie Stein off the man miss. Andrew Harrison. To his brother. And now Randall. Big collision in the paint. And the foul's going to be on Georgia. We check in with Shannon. Well, Brad, just watching this game in the second half so far, you can see the energy level of both of these teams. It was evident when they were coming out of the locker room as well. In fact, the Georgia players, they ran out of the locker room, ran through the tunnel. Mark Fox told me if we had made all of our free throws in that first half, we would be up coming into this game, coming into the second half. But he did say the good thing is they're within striking distance, and they get those two lead scores back after being in foul trouble. They did miss six free throws in the first half. Randall just missed one right there. He's missed three of his five. So there's both teams that are leaving some 15 feet away right now. Brad, we've seen Kentucky, Dakari Johnson turn it over on the low block, Willie Colley Stein missing a shot around the rim. Now, why is this important? The last two national champions, Kentucky made 69% of their shots that they took around the rim when they won the national championship two years ago. Louisville shot 67% on shots around the rim. And you have to have the ability to convert in close. John Calipari knows we can't make a deep run in this tournament or the next one if we can't make our rim shots. You have to do it. Thornton trying to get around Carly Stein. He almost threw it away. Jurisic back in the lineup for Georgia. Again, he's a guy that can hit the outside shot. Man's going to take a three over Carly Stein. Randall powers his way baseline. Threw it to the other side. Jurisic stepped on the baseline. If you don't foul Randall and bail him out, he'll take enough bad shots to keep you in the ball game if you're George. Move your feet. He's not going towards the rim on his shots. And there's the tightrope and the heel and a good call by Mike Nance to have enough depth as a official to be on top of. I understand. Your Jurisic, though, going, hey, come to the ball. Give me a little yes. help. I'm falling. I'm 45-degree angle. Give me some love. I'll try to get the ball into you. Harrison, pull-up jumper. Poitras tried to follow. This time, Georgia does get the rebound. I don't think Kentucky has had points off of an offense rebound yet in this game, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. J.D. Rutledge, our ace statistician, is telling us two points 
Uh, but they get a boatload of them, is, is my point. They have two, but they've had a ton of opportunities. Rebounding about 60% of their misses in this game has been Kentucky, but dominant on the offensive glass. They don't, they don't have one today, Brad. They do not have points off of an offensive rebound yet. Brandon Morris talked that one in. Brandon Morris, the sophomore, out of Lathonia. Left-hander trying to cut it back to a three-point game. Not this time. Boythris and Dakari Johnson almost fought for that rebound together. You love that. As a coach, you love your two guys fighting each other on the block. As long as you don't hold on to it too long. Absolutely. <laughs> Under the 16-minute mark, Kentucky hanging on to a four-point lead. Young tries a three. Air ball. Hit the net and nothing else. In a bad way. That's good offense. The shot doesn't go, but that's good offense. Again, Mark Fox lifting his big guys. Not going to go blow for blow on that low block. Making Kentucky cover action in this game. And Kenny Gaines still hasn't scored in 25 minutes of action. Another pass that wasn't the best. And Georgia brings it down the other way. Gaines, will he score this trip? Yes, he will. This is as close as Georgia's been since it was 2 to nothing. And with that, John Calipari says, I've seen enough. 15-03 to play. Georgia trailing Kentucky now by only two. Hey. 41-39. Kentucky, 15-03 to play as we take a look at the latest dish on the SEC tournament brought to you by the Dish Network. Latest dish, Joe Lenardi's Bracketology. Look down to the bottom there. NC State's playing Duke and hanging around. Georgia's down only two to Kentucky. You talk about some bid stealers, huh? Absolutely. If you're on the bubble right now, you are cheering as hard as you can for Duke and Kentucky to eliminate the possibility of NC State or Georgia coming in and stealing one on Selection Sunday. Remember, Georgia started their season in non-conference play 6-6. Six and six. They end up 12-6 and six in conference play. They're looking for their 20th win almost amazingly. And if, if they can get it over... Kentucky in this building filled with blue. That would be a major accomplishment. It would put them one step away from stealing one of those bids. Whoever survives this one plays Florida for the Southeastern Conference Championship tomorrow. 3.15 on ESPN. Jimmy Channon and I will be here to bring it to you. All man-to-man -man defense so far this half by Mark Fox. He trusted his zone in the first half as he come out of the timeout and go back to the zone. And that looks like that's what he's going to throw at Kentucky. And a small side of the zone, Brad, is up top where Frazier is now. Young hesitated on taking a three and instead drives in and buries the floater for his 10th point. Brad Frazier rotated all the way over from the weak side to the ball side block, but then he became a statue instead of getting down and being able to throw up the wall at Young. But he's not the biggest statue in Atlanta. No, but he, he still, he was a, a small statue doesn't work. you got to move. <laughs> Aaron pass. Costly turnover. Georgia hasn't had many. Harrison, another three. Brad, the ball's not even hitting the rim right now for Aaron Harrison. The body language, a complete reversal from the Harrison Twins just over the last month. John Calipari has never given up on this team. Has he had issues? Yes. But he's never given up on them, infusing a lot of energy right now. In 51 seconds, it's become a seven-point lead. Mark Fox called a timeout to stop the bleeding. They're down seven now. It happened in a hurry, Jimmy. I talked about the small side of the zone, and this is Frazier. He's all of about 5'9", and in transition, Kentucky's going to go to the small side of the floor defensively. And Frazier attacks the basketball, and you cannot leave a shooter that's not hitting anything but the net, and Frazier did. I like what Kentucky's done, though. I think they've identified how small Frazier is. If Georgia stays in the zone in the half court, expect more jump shots on that side of the floor. 
Harrison, a great day for Aaron with 19. Shannon? Well, Brad, Jimmy, you guys mentioned how Aaron Harrison has really come on strong the last couple weeks. I saw him at shoot-around a few weeks ago. He pulled Coach Cal aside, and he asked him how he could bring more energy to his game. The answer from Cal, he told him, it's all in your head. You have to keep your energy up by talking yourself into playing 40 minutes. We are seeing that take place today. Yeah, he's played a great game to this point. He's played 26 minutes of great basketball to lead the way. There's the two brothers, Andrew on the left, Aaron on the right. And one's doing all the scoring, and the other one's doing most of the dishing to it. Yeah, Brad, if you have, at any level, especially college and pro, if you have a point guard that can constantly make fast, accurate passes, into shooters so they don't have to shoot a bad pass then you're ahead of about 75 percent of the team scotty wilbekin does it for florida and so far in this game andrew harrison is making fast accurate passes giving his brother plenty of time to rhythm into his shot let's see if george has got an answer now they had cut it to two and saw it slip to seven in a hurry george is still with one one offensive rebound in this game. It's almost impossible to do without trying. Yeah, and, and you know what? That's kind of a rougher game plan out of respect for Kentucky's run game. Gains for three. Finally. Get gains, Kenny gains from the outside. Get gains going early is what we talked about in this broadcast. And now can Mark Fox get him going late? Young just praying for it. He's not going to take the shot. Again, it's Frazier, the top end of the Georgia zone. Kentucky's going to try to pick on him again. That time, Georgia strips it away, though. Kentucky turnover. Again, Charles Mann on the Georgia bench with nine points. And right now, Mark Fox is letting Frazier... And Gaines carry it in the backcourt. Jurisic. Well, finally, somebody made a move to try to get into Randall's chest, and it worked. Mark Fox goes to 24 down. And that's probably a, a, like a, a two-man making the pass to the four guy. Jurisic off the baseline cut. It's a lot of different variations for Mark Fox to work off, Brad. And that simple cross-screen, down-screen action that he is so good at since way back in his days at Nevada. Emmy Jurisic at the free throw line just rattles it off the front of the rim. He's two for five today from the strike. After his first year as head coach at Nevada, Mark Fox, Tech's winner, the, one of the great basketball minds out there, told him that you're trying to do everything on the first side of the floor. So he adapted in his mind an offensive influence of ball reversals and flex cuts. Tex Winter, the innovator of the triangle offense, has a big impact on how Mark Fox sees and thinks the game offensively. Randall Harrison. And now Young for three. Comes right to Dakari Johnson. Didn't have to work for that rebound. He's going to try to work for that, though. And one. <laughs> I love that from Dakari Johnson. Because John Calipari's brought him over in this game a couple of times and said, I can't play you because you're not strong enough and tough enough with the basketball. And what does he do? He comes right back out, gets a strong rebound in traffic, jerks it away, attacks the 10, powers it up. Well done, 44 in white. He had a good game last night. Nine points, 11 rebounds, and three block shots. And now they're going to get a fresh shot clock and another chance. Harrison, three, yes! Kentucky's Biggest lead of the half for Kentucky. Brad, they've gone from no second chance points two minutes ago, now to five. Kentucky shooting the three off of a post touch. It doesn't matter that it's not in the half court. It was a post touch off of an offensive rebound, and then the second pass off the post touch results in a wide open three for Harrison. And again, no rim. And the reaction from the Wildcat fans at the Georgia Dome. Harrison with 22 points, including four threes. Jurisic is going to try his own triple. 
That's not a terrible shot. He's capable of hitting that, but with nobody home on the rebound except white jerseys. He'll try another one. And it goes in on the tip, trying to get the rebound. Young knocked it in off the window. Mark Fox has got to stop it. The lead has gone to 10, the biggest of the ball game. Kentucky played loose and fast last night against LSU. They talked about Frazier. He's trying to hold up in a game as a small body guard against the big bodies of Kentucky. Off the ball reversal of the post touch of the offensive rebound, boom, splash. Nothing but the net. And on the next play, look at James Young come in and just knocks Frazier out of the way. And the long reach around the rim is an offensive rebound. And Kentucky right now firing on all cylinders. And Mark Fox says, I've got to stop it. Ten point lead. It was a 10-point lead in the first half at 28 to 18. That was the biggest lead of the first half. It was a two-point game, literally, about uh, three minutes ago. And now here it is at 10. That's what Kentucky can do to you when they play like they did the second half last night and uh, right now. The, the, the ball's not being stuck, first of all, in the half-court offense. Kentucky's doing a good job, Brad, of keeping plays alive with their length. And what, again, can John Calipari's team do to you over the years? They can smother you on the defensive end of the floor with their size, rip it off the backboard, and then run it down. And right now, guys like Young and Harrison and Randall, the ball is moving much better than it was the first half. It's not stagnant. And John Calipari going with a smash mouth lineup with Willie Colley Stein on one side, Nikari Johnson on the other, and the Big Blue Nation is loving everything they see. A lot of them on their feet right now. Georgia has got to do something to try to get back in this thing as we approach. The midway point of the second half. Charles Mann back in there at the guard spot for the dogs. So is Gaines, who's trying to get something going and did all seven of his points in this half. Now can Georgia get a stop is the big question. I thought he was going to launch another one. He maybe should have. Young trying to pack it into Johnson. Can't find an opening. Nine on the shot clock. Andrew Harrison. Got it to Carly Stein. Or did he? Nope. Threw it away. Maybe Carly Stein comes to the ball a little bit better. He catches that one. Just kind of standing still. And Georgia got a paw in there to knock it away. There's a pro slot 45 degree ball screen that's so difficult to defend, but Willie Colley Stein can erase mistakes at the rim. He just did. He had six of those erasers yeah. last night. That's the first Kentucky block of this day. Big one, though. That's not easy action to erase, Brad. That 45 degree angle, Russell Westbrook, so good at it in the, in the NBA because you can go either hand with momentum at the rim. But Willie Colley Stein is there to protect the rim. Ten minutes to go, second half. Andrew Harrison in some traffic. And they're going to call a push on Georgia on the baseline. And he either caught an elbow or something, and he's in pain down on the baseline. First guy to be there, of course, would be his brother, Aaron. And we'll take a break here and check on him when we come back. 9.57 to play, Kentucky by eight. John, 10-point lead for Duke, an 8-point lead for Kentucky, 53-45. As Andrew Harrison got it in the chin or the eye on this play right here where the foul was called. I'm not sure he didn't get a little bit of something from Kenny Gaines and then he ran into the hip of Dante Williams as he hit the deck. And it appears to be okay. We talk about the Harrisons. How about 22nd of February, Andrew Harrison was fouling on Ali Upatem, hit his head on the floor. He'd be okay, but his twin brother... Aaron could almost feel the pain. Watch this. Now, he takes a hard shot there, and his brother's going, oh, man, that hurt. Yeah. <laughs> two fell, and five can feel it. That is brotherly love. You know, they're, they're really two sweet kids when you visit with them. And the expectations and the hype that surrounded them, there you go, uh, was probably unrealistic in terms of 
what they were going to be able to produce from day one, but starting to see signs of what they can be going forward. Andrew might be seeing stars right now, but his brother has been the star. Aaron with 22 points on four threes. The next step of progression for Aaron Harrison, Brad, you go watch Steph Curry as a shooter. Excellent before the catch. He moves, he pauses, he'll curl you, he'll nudge you, he'll two-step misdirection and pop on you. He does it all. And Aaron Harrison, is he's going to have a future in the NBA. He's going to be a shooter, and he's got to learn all those nuances. It's a foot fight as a shooter to get yourself in shooting position, and he will grow into that. But that would be one good place to start studying is how Steph Curry moves without the ball. Tony Green over there with a the headset on, having a look at the monitor. I, I, if they're looking at Dakari Johnson for anything, I don't see it. Foul well, was called on Brandon Morris. And so the discussion going on on the sideline. And Dakari Johnson. There's a little push between he and Charles Mann. Well, if anyone got contact above the head, it's it's man. Right side of your screen, right there. The elbow comes up with man. Dakari Johnson, his contact was below the neck and shoulders. They say a basketball play, and let's go on. So that'll mean inbounds on the baseline for Aaron Harrison. While his brother is on the bench recovering from the fall. Under 10 to play, Kentucky by eight. Georgia's got a bigger zone out there now with Charles Mann and Thornton. Harrison, 10 on the shot clock. He might just backpedal and take one here. Well, he gives it up, four to shoot. Gonna have to hurry. Randall, and on a late clock, a foul and a basket. Is it good? It is. Yeah, Georgia did everything it could on that defensive possession. And then the pressure release for John Calipari last night and today is Julius Randle in the middle part of the floor up top and letting him attack. They went to it last night on three or four occasions. And tonight in a late clock, Julius Randle in the same spot. Powerful guy going right through the contact and maybe got an extra step. Maybe not. Randall with 10 now. There's Carol and his mom. And the lead's the biggest it's been all day. Kentucky has adjusted his defense spread on the outside. No more outside drives. Almost squaring people up like the Virginia Cavaliers play defense. And look at Poitras. Again, no outside drives this half by Kentucky. They've made the adjustment that bothered Cal in the first 20 minutes. Man drives against Collie Stein and drew the foul. And that'll send him to the free throw line. And that's four. Uh, Willie Collie Stein. What does that defensive adjustment do? It forces Georgia to make plays driving the ball through the nail. Not giving outside drives. Willie Colley Stein comes up, gets back down in a stance, but again, not giving you anything on the outside to affect your rotation, making you make plays into the crowded part of the floor. Charles Mann at the free throw line. Georgia's leading score at 13 and a half a game. And still has yet to hit double digits today. Colley Stein will go out. And Dakari Johnson comes back in for Kentucky. Cuts it back to 10. It's Randall, Andrew Harrison, Aaron Harrison, Alex Poitras, 
Dakari Johnson, the five on the floor for Kentucky. 3-2 zone by Georgia. And it's big on the bottom side of the floor. Right there, that's the big side of the zone. Randall passes out of the middle. The, rent, the uh, Harrisons play catch out on top. And now Aaron fires a three. That one off the mark. It did hit the rim. Randall tried to save it and stepped on the baseline. So we approach the eight-minute mark in a ten-point game. It was a four-point game at halftime. Kentucky led 36-32. Georgia cut it to two. The Cats have stretched it to 11 at one point just moments ago. And can Georgia find any offense? That's been their problem a lot of times this year in a 19 and 12 season. Nice use of the body right there by Kenny Gaines. Griffin play by Gaines, Brad. A small guy inside again. The ability of Mark Fox to invert his guard, but you're right. Boom, Gaines got his keister into the defender and knocked him off and then went up and in. Very well done. And Harrison on a drive this time. Andrew, only his second field goal. We're not seeing near as many attacks by Kentucky into a crowd like they were for a three or four week stretch in the regular season where they just drive in and throw up a prayer. Now much more selective and better with the decision making. Jurisic, hook shot, won't drop. Randall, another rebound. That's his 11th. He's got a double-double today. 10 points, 11 boards. His 20th of the year. Here he is offensively. Takes Jurisic to the ground. Jurisic picks up the foul. 7-0-8. Kentucky. 7-0-8 away from playing Florida for the SEC Tournament Championship tomorrow. They've got the edge as we've got a timeout. After this message, and a word from our AV. The Cats lead the Dogs by 10, 7.08 to go in the ball game as we take a look at our Tournament Challenge resume brought to you by Allstate. Go to ESPN.com and sign up for the Tournament Challenge. Here's a look at Kentucky's resume. Well, they've beaten one of the teams that could win this whole thing in Louisville. Uh, Tennessee at Missouri. There's a good R BPR, RPI numbers. They're going to be probably a 5 or 6 seed. Wish they had more wins against the RPI top 25, but they didn't. I said about Mark Fox, Brad, and his offense, his guards know how to score around the rim because they invert their offense well. Watch what happens. Hold it here, guys. Gaines is going to step in and win this part of the floor right here. It's a foot fight around the rim. Boom. Blows him up, goes up and scores. Seven minutes to go, and Kentucky holding a 10-point advantage. And Calipari screams out directions, and now his offense changes gears as he runs. James Young trying to loosen him up. Now Randall on the baseline, and he stepped on it. Let's check in with Shannon. Well, Brad, Mark Fox not happy with his defense in that huddle. He told these guys they're not set in the zone. Kentucky is driving right through him, so he said he was going to switch back to man-to-man -man on this possession. But he did say, guys, we have seven minutes to prove how tough you are. We'll find out. Well, we're tough enough to win 12 conference games. Plus, a win over Ole Miss in the tournament last night. Back out to Charles Mann at the point. Mann's got to be aggressive, Brad. And now running out of time. Kenny Gaines is going to have to put one up here. Rattled it out. Last touch by Dakari Johnson. And Georgia will have a fresh shot clock and a new chance. Georgia may have caught a break. Here it looked like it was off Georgia. Down to six minutes and no change in the score. Still Kentucky by ten. I think Mann's got to get a little bit hungrier. The remaining six minutes of this game as a score. That's the problem Georgia's had. These drops on offense where they can't find a guy either willing to take the shot. Oh, they're not quite good enough to take the shot. 
Jimmy Kimmel's back from Austin for a great week of new shows featuring Scandals, Tony Goldwyn, Modern Families, Ty Burrell, Ashley Judd, Howie Mandel, and on Monday, Uma Thurman. Jimmy Kimmel Live all next week, 11.35, 10.35 Central Time on ABC. Ashley's probably watching, don't you think? I would say. I said earlier when we did that look ahead to what Jimmy's got coming up this week. She is one of the biggest Kentucky fans ever. A lot of the Kentucky fans right now are starting to stand again and urging on their offense. They've been a very vocal group for the last two days. Andrew Harrison got it for, is it two or three? I think they're going to look at it right now. They might give him three and then check it later. At any rate, we got a timeout to check it. Yeah, the ball has really been hot between the Harrison twins today. They're going to look at that three, but right now it looks like a 13-point lead with just over five to go. All right, John. John, I know you're as comfortable in skates as you are in shoes. Andrew Harrison's comfortable in his shoes. If they were a half size bigger, that would have been a two. The officials took a look at that. It was a three-point shot. And if he hadn't pigeon-toed that right foot a little bit, that might have only been a two-point shot. The officials spent most of that time out looking at it. 61-48. Now Georgia's out of their comfort zone, Brad. They're going to have to have a little bit quicker pace, a little bit quicker tempo in what they're doing offensively. No longer can they afford to grind this game away. Gaines and Mann have tried to step up, but they're just not playing the way they're capable of, at least as scores. Man will try it off the window. Just on cue, he knocks down a tough shot. Kentucky switches out the one through five action that time. Willie Colley Stein taking on the one guy. John Calipari continues to trust his switching action. He ne they never panic now, even when a five matches up with a one. Randall wheels on Thornton. Takes it in, hang time, didn't get him the shot off the glass. And instead, a foul on Kentucky. The book on Julius Randle in the NCAA tournament will be, do not foul him and bail him out when he attacks the rim. He's going to take enough hard, off-balance shots that he's going to miss. Don't put him on the free throw strike. Willie Cauley Stein has fouled out. No points after a game last night where he had eight points, six rebounds, and six block shots. So, up night last night, down night today. Yeah. Up, maybe down, may, up, maybe down. up tomorrow, yeah, might maybe be. halfway, who knows? <laughs> Should be a dominant defensive player every game that he's on the floor, Brad. He's a seven-footer. He's cat quick with his feet. He's the first guy off the floor. And when he's not engaged, he's a half-step to late to the party. And that left elbow not, pushed not Parker there, to the though. deck. It was a good battle between three big guys. But that's not changing, Willie. You can rest the next 412. Well, maybe it is going to change. Go to the monitor <laughs> to make sure they got the right foul, I guess, on the, who they call the foul on. Maybe it's on Randall instead. Well, the officials have spent just about as much time looking at their monitors as Jimmy and I have over here. <laughs> Shot by Randall, a hard shot. Don't foul him. That's, I don't know, I think that foul's on Randall. Initial contact by Randall with the right, right arm right there into, into Parker. And that the foul first. Yeah. All right, Willie, call back out. Come on back out, Willie. And he will. So he is not yet, but Randall's got three fouls now. Jurisic and Mann, Thornton, Parker, and Gaines on the floor for Georgia. Where will the offense come from? Or will they get any? With that same 5-1 switch. Oh, man. That hurt. Luckily, he's 19 years old. And he can handle that.
Championship Week presented by Dick's Sporting Goods continues tonight at 6. The American Championship game. UConn takes on defending national champion Louisville at 6. And at 9, it's a Big 12 title game. Baylor and Iowa State will tangle. Both games on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN. That's yet to come tonight. My scouts have been out there and they're telling me that's the thing I saw a few weeks ago. You don't want any part of the Louisville Cardinals in that NCAA tournament. Russ Smith. What do you have? 41 yesterday? What? Something like that. Yeah. 47. Was it 47? Well, I believe so. Whatever it was, it it's, was a lot. What, it's what Russ is capable of doing in March. Kentucky with a comfortable lead. Don't need to hurry anything here. Andrew Harrison got it to drop. With a hesitation by Andrew Harrison as a 6'5 guard. Punched it, backed it up, and then punched it again at another gear. Very well done. They match their biggest lead, up 13. Gaines off the window. Nice drive, Kenny Gaines. They could have used more of Kenny Gaines in the first half, and it might be tighter. Mark Fox gets up, clapping his hands, trying to keep his team in it here with three to play. Down 11. Again, they work it down near the 10 second mark on the shot clock before they go to work. Trying to eat some game clock. Julius Randle gives it up. Andrew Harrison drains the outside jumper for three, and now he's taken over where his brother scored in the first half. He's taken over the scoring in the second half. 10. In the last 17 and a half minutes, Carly Stein sends one into the trombone section. And that's deep. Andrew Harrison, watch the hesitation. The punch, the pullback, and then the repunch on Jurisic. Very hard to guard. And then he sticks a three. Kentucky boy, Brett, their, their body language as good as I've seen all year right now. And now with the turnover, Young! With a slam, Kentucky starting to roll toward the Gators tomorrow afternoon. Lethal in transition is Kentucky in the Georgia Dome. Their ability to defend the rim and erase mistakes by Willie Colley Stein then triggers the run game. I've said it all year long. John Calipari's team, when they win a national championship or make deep runs, they smother you defensively, and they get out, and they finish it to the other end with, within three or four seconds of the shot clock. James Young got that one down, Brad, and there were still 32 seconds to go. So they block the shot, get it off the boards, and within three seconds, they're putting two on you on the other end. Start thinking about the balance, Jimmy, right now. 12 for Andrew Harrison, 22 for his brother Aaron. That is now 14 for Young with that slam, and 10 for Julius Randle. Six for Dakari Johnson. Everybody in the act. Well, what was that equation that John Calipari won a national championship with a few years ago? Yeah. The same thing. Everybody between 8 and 10 shots. And is this a Kentucky team that... Well, they're playing late catch-up with that. That Kentucky team was so far advanced at this point. How much better can Kentucky get tomorrow and in that NCAA tournament? Still a pretty good ceiling above them. Well, obviously, Florida running the table, and the SEC won both meetings. 69-59, and then 84-65. to, 50, uh, 84 to 65. And That got down to six points at one point before Florida took over at the O-Dome and ran it up to that score. Double-double in both games for Julius Randle. Scotty Wilbekin average 18 and six assists. Brad, I believe in that last ball game, Kentucky at one point in the second half went on like a 14 or 15-0 run. Yeah. If I'm Billy Donovan, I'm sure they've already watched that part of the film. And I bet he plugs that part of the film in tonight in front of his guys in the hotel and says, remember, this is what they did to you over a three or four-minute stretch. And let's watch this. Remember, there was a two-point game in this half, and in 51 seconds, it was a seven-point game. So that's just a mini version of what you're talking it about. Is. Emmy Jurisic got both. Seven points for him. We're under two minutes. And Kentucky 
by 14. Trying to trap Andrew Harrison. That didn't work. Georgia needs a bunch of stops in a hurry. Kentucky, with the lead they have of 14, knows that they can just sit on this thing and take a late shot clock attempt. Randall drives in for that attempt and scores. That, that might be part of the tweak that John Calipari has put in getting ready for this tournament because time and time again in late clock, he gets Julius Randall in the middle third of the floor and just lets him take over. Gaines drains a three. It'll be way too little and way too late for Kenny Gaines. Uh, excellent half for him, but he didn't score in the first half. And Georgia needed his firepower a long time ago. Under a minute. Georgia scrapping as they have done all year to get to this point, but their season's going to end at 19 and 13 here shortly. Kentucky takes a timeout so they can bring out the starters, bring up the crowd, bring in the guys that don't get a lot of playing time. And they know now that the Gators of Florida come up tomorrow at 3.15. Brad, there has been a difference also in John Calipari on that sideline. I said it a couple of weeks ago, coaches have body language too. He has changed his body language since he got tossed at South Carolina, realizing that the, the buttons that he was pushing at that point, they weren't working. So he has changed. He told his team he was going to change and do what he had to be in order for this team to re reach its potential. Will they reach their full potential before they get beat again? I don't know, but they're making up a lot of ground right now in this tournament. Well, they have won 45 SEC titles, 27 tournament titles. That's 13 more than all the other teams in the Southeastern Conference combined. They get a shot for another one tomorrow, but they've got to play the number one team in the country to get it. The foul sends Georgia to the free throw line that could improve the final tally by a couple. Morris got them both. No matter how you slice it, there's going to be a lot of blue in the building tomorrow, be it Gator Blue or Kentucky Blue. And they're pretty close in shade. I don't think we'll see any red seats in the Georgia Dome for the most part. Big game by number two. He was the catalyst in the first half. With 16 of his 22 points. He had four threes on the day. His brother had two in the second half. And great balance scoring by Kentucky today. Final 31 seconds. I didn't know coming in, Brad, if, if last night's win by Kentucky and how they played was just a, a high point, and then they, they would sink back down to being stagnant offensively and not playing with energy in life. Now it's back-to-back -back games, and it's back-to-back -back games from a Kentucky team that is going to be somewhere in that five or six seed position to be very dangerous. I got on the elevator with a lady today. I said they played pretty well last night. She was all decked in blue. I said, can they do it again? She said, if I had the answer to that question, I could be coaching the team or I could be running this hotel. <laughs> well, ma'am, they did it two nights in a row. <laughs> Take over the hotel. That sets up our tournament championship for the SEC title. Here at the Georgia Dome tomorrow, the number one seed and the number one team in the country, Florida, the number two seed, the Wildcats of Kentucky. 315. Jimmy, Shannon, and I'll be there. We'll bring it to you. Join us at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta again tomorrow. The 2014 SEC basketball tournament will conclude tomorrow at 315. Coming up at 6, it's World News tonight with David Muir expected on the West Coast. For Jimmy Dykes, Shannon Spake, and our entire ESPN ABC crew, Brad Nessler, goodbye from Atlanta. See you tomorrow.